Welcome to 3D Asset Production. My name is Mikhail Odoshevich and I'm a production designer and a CG journalist focused on modeling, texturing and look development. For the past five years I've been working on films, games and commercials and the most recent project was designing and modeling of assets for Kit Bash 3D. My goal as an instructor is to give you insights to my production pipeline that I used on our team project called Freight and teach you techniques that will help you with your professional and personal projects. We'll start off by learning the basics of using different tools inside 3ds Max, smart usage of modifiers and keeping everything procedural. In addition, I will explain different modeling approaches and the pipelines behind them. Before the modeling phase, we will briefly touch upon project organization and naming, gathering and working with references and concept art. Next, starting from the block out to the final stages of modeling, we will prep our UVs and pack them all for texturing. Then, we'll jump into Substance Painter, where I will show you how quickly and easily you can create textures for your models, and how you can make fast presentations using implemented iRay Render. In the final stage, we'll go back to 3ds Max, where we will set up a scene using our finished assets, and we will render out an image using Octane. By the end of this course, you will acquire a knowledge of different modeling and texturing pipelines. You will learn a new set of techniques, which once implemented into your own pipeline, will hopefully help you with your future projects. So enroll today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Welcome to 3 oh, okay. go. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We're just in the middle we of the conversation watching that trailer together. Yeah. And then I, I, we just... Yeah, I didn't share, you didn't share the screen, so I didn't see the trailer. Uh, but I know what it's, what it's about, so it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've seen it. You've, I mean, you've done yeah. it. So yeah. yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you know what's up. You know what's up. Uh, welcome <laughs> everybody. We're back on Twitch, and this is the release stream. Yeah. Uh, first class of 2019. It's taking us a little longer, but we're obviously, as usual, want to make sure that we're getting the best stuff for you guys. And we're starting this year with uh, Mihailo Radosevich, if I'm pronouncing yeah, it correctly. Yeah, it's good, it's good. You didn't it should, be, should, be te should be technically Radosevich? Radosevich. Radosevich, yeah, yeah. okay. Radosevich. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I still have uh, a little bit of that Eastern European. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not dead, completely dead, so. <laughs> it's really strong in you, so it's uh, hard to kill. Yeah. Uh, for yeah. anyone who's interested, we have our class live right now. So yeah, let's just go and check it out. I'm obviously enrolled to it because I, because I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, Mihailo. Well, we we kind of met uh, right before this. <laughs> and we obviously met uh, up a bit through, ago. through different channels as well. We talked about making the class for a while. Um, and yeah, this is one of those courses that we just didn't have on the platform yet where it's an actual, like we do have production pipelines, uh, courses, but not one that, that just covers so much ground in terms of where it can be used. One of the things that I really love about the class, uh, mm -hmm. and I love all of them, obviously, uh, if, if I wouldn't love them, they would not be on the platform. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, is that, you know, I know from my personal experience that everything that is covered in the class can be used used in so many applications, like can be applied in so many areas from video games, film, illustration, working with uh, smaller, larger clients. The workflow you present is basically, it can, if you, yeah, for, for a 3D artist or even concept artist who, who uses 3D or, or wants to learn 3D, which I would argue is your number one priority these days, you learn yeah. 3D <laughs> if you're a concept yeah. artist or, or illustrator, this class uh, definitely walks you through pretty much, like covers all the grounds you need to know, uh, to know like a proper pipeline. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome, man. Uh, well, let's introduce you first. Uh, uh, a lot of people that's going to be joining us today, uh, I'm pretty sure are aware he, who you are. Um, but it's always good to, you know, say a word or two, um, you know, just just get people a little more familiar. And I'll just interject before that real quick. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, this is your time. Um, you know, if you, if you have a sense with the class, 
or uh, you're not sure, you know, whether you um, <coughs> want to buy it or not, or like you, you're just hanging out and want to know a little more about uh, Mihailo or the class itself. Yeah, just please uh, ask any questions and uh, and we'll answer them. So, Mihailo, uh, it's your time. <laughs> Let's introduce you. Yeah. So um, yeah, my name is Mihailo, but it's much more easier just to say Mika as a, as a Mika. nickname. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a production designer by trade, but for the past like five years or six years, I've been to I'm a I'm a CG artist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I started out my career uh, right after university or well while I was still uh, in school I started work on films because I have a, a background um, in interior furniture design and, and production design I started out working on films as a set designer and uh, later on well first of all I was a, a art department trainee so um, I started out as a graphic designer, model maker, concept artist, and then on in later films I started to work on um, on films as a set designer and um, and construction supervisor. And um, I realized uh, after one film that I didn't want to do that anymore because usually the time well while you work on film. Uh, it's waking up at um, 6 a.m. Uh, breakfast at uh, 6.30, you're at, on set at 7 a.m. and then you're back in the hotel if you're away from home. Uh, you're back in the hotel at, I don't know, 11 p.m. and I just thought it's not for me. <laughs> so I started working in an animation studio in Belgrade. Uh, it's called Spring Onion Studio. Mm -hmm. And that's where I learned a lot because uh, when I came to that studio, I thought that uh, I knew it all uh, regarding 3D because um, I started learning 3ds Max back in 2006 or five. It was 3ds Max six back then, and I thought, yeah, I just like 3D, Long time 3D, ago. Easy. yeah. But I, I, I made like a really big pause because I had a really crappy PC and it's like <laughs> if I if I had a scene which was about like 100,000 polys in a scene, it was like, wow, you know, and uh, and then I just started like learning when I when I got to that studio and um, then I enrolled, uh, I went back to school and uh, for the past two years I've been working on my PhD learning Unreal and uh, VR in Unreal. And uh, the most difficult part about that is Blueprints. So if anybody's wa if anyone who's watching knows Blueprints, just <laughs> send me an email or something like that because it's really <laughs> difficult. It's just, I don't know how people, it, they represent it as so logical, but it's totally not, I don't know. It might be so, just yeah. the way you read it, you know. Um, there's certain aspects of CGI that I just like. I look at it, it's like it looks like black. Like, it just looks like magic, you know. Like I don't yeah, know what's yeah. going on. I guess it's just a, a matter of um, you know how much time you're gonna spend on digesting the content to understand like what it does. But yeah, blueprints can be can be tricky. Can be that yeah, I thought tricky. I thought it was like it, because it was node based. It was like okay, just like making shaders. Or materials, you know, it's because it's node based, you don't need to type in anything. But even though, if it if, because they're nodes, they're still difficult. Yeah. And I don't know how I'm gonna manage that, but yeah. So it's been uh, well over a decade. You've been you've been working in this industry. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, about like that. Two thousand six. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, but working in the industry is more like five years. Six, gotcha, like, gotcha. so like really, learning, really working. I yeah, guess learning yeah. and then working in the industry, it's still a lot yeah. of time. Like if you think about yeah. it, it's, 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 it's pretty extensive amount of time. Anything yeah. you learn that, that takes over 10 years, that like, means something. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm always, always trying to like learn new things because I try to like be more, uh, be more quick in the production. Right. So for this year I planned out like learning Unreal. Well, you, most is going to be blueprints, but the rest, it's totally, um, it's easy to learn regarding Unreal and Substance Designer. Uh, I think that is the next one, which I'm going to learn. Nice. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah. Awesome. 
So um, mm-hmm. I saw you did a little bit of work with you, you did uh, the film with Sava, which yeah. is the fright. And I, I yeah. you know, parts of the trailer that we've, we've been just showing are from from that film, as well as uh, IFCC titles. Yeah. Those look awesome, dude. Those look Thanks. P- p- pretty Thanks. rad. Yeah. Um, how was your experience working on those two projects? Because there's like a bunch of other, you know, you did a bunch of commer- commercials, short films and whatnot. There's just like a pretty extensive library of things you've done. For anyone who's interested to see your work, I'm actually going to paste it in uh, in the chat. But it's going to be in the in the notes for <coughs> those who are watching it over YouTube as well. You can check Mihailo's work. Um, how do you uh, say your nickname? It's like... Mika. Uh, all, well, you know, on the on the social media, it would be Oli. Oli. It's my name in reverse. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting old, dude. <laughs> I'm getting old. It's much more easier just like to type in like uh, reverse <laughs> name and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna play the the fright short in the yeah, meantime as awesome. we're talking. Um, so what made you and obviously we are going to jump into the class itself very shortly and for mm-hmm. anyone who's interested let me just pause this real quick uh you can actually go on learnsquare.com and the class is available so uh yeah it's right here it's waiting waiting for you guys <laughs> um but yeah, you, you know, you have very interesting software uh, choice of software, which I applaud. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> <much what> I <laughs> use. <laughs> um, yeah, regarding like the course, it's gonna be if you're even using Blender or Maya or any other three program, it's gonna be like the same kind of te- technique, same mm-hmm. kind of workflow. It's just a different program. That's it. Everything right. is again based on quads and and triangles, so it's totally fine. Yeah. yeah, what you do there is um, is very it's it's a very solid production uh, based uh, workflow, which is you know something that if you are planning to work in video games and you want to use if you're an illustrator in video games and you want your assets to be actually useful, learning this workflow is very very good for the reason that it's just you know you we're not optimizing assets in this class obviously like optimizing in the way of making like super low poly for you know for consoles and whatnot but we are optimizing them to be quads basically and 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 yeah and you know with uvs and everything ready for for you know what video game or even film like if you think about film and vfx um what vfx studios would do they would actually use the, the similar workflow where uh, you want to have everything pretty clean and and streamlined. Actually, you know, it make, make, makes me think that maybe we should actually jump to talk about the class since we already already kind of started. You know. Yeah. Oh um, uh, well. So let's let's do that. Let's uh, let's maybe start with um, you know what the class is about for everyone who's who's joining. Uh, it is a three D assets production class. Uh, we we're actually trying to figure out the name for the class for a little while because it just covers so yeah. many grounds, <laughs> like yeah. concepts, co- like three D concepts in production, like production art, three D modeling, for production. 3D modeling, three D generalist. Like there's just so many names for this, and um, it actually no, it's you know to be assets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And you know, like it, the funny part about us fi- trying to figure out the naming or the name for the class was was just the realization that this is where the industry is going where whether you're a concept artist 3d artist animator and whatnot it the software is just so readily readily available and easy to learn that there's just like there's just no reason not to yeah uh, and and this is this class is like, like a perfect example uh in my opinion you know like just jump into it and, and learn it because if you if you don't know 3D, you, you, it's gonna be pretty difficult pretty soon. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, let's talk about the class itself. Uh, what were you, what were your goals, uh, and what do you would you know technically expect from the students to uh, get out of this? You know. Well, the goal uh, of the whole course is to just introduce uh, students who are just starting out using 3D packages. Um, to well to learn in this case 3ds Max, but the knowledge can be applied to any other um, 3D program as I mentioned. 
So um, the first part is uh, of the course is just like introduction to 3ds Max. So for someone who is working in ZBrush or in um, I don't know in uh, 3D codes or in uh, Moi 3D, I think it's called. Yeah, moments for art moments of inspiration. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they can uh, incorporate this uh, course into their um, well tool set after they finish this course because they're gonna know. Well, they'll, they'll learn 3ds Max, uh, the tools uh, which are mostly used uh, while modeling for production. Yeah, the, the, so, the fun part about that also, I'll just interject real quick, is, you know, learning, you're not only learning the software, but also, you know, a lot of uh, term, terminology that translates towards other uh, applications as well, you know? Uh, it's, yeah. not, it's not only, oh, this is, this is only applying to 3ds Max, like... Again, like you said, if you are a person that's using Maya or Modo or any other packages, uh, the, the, the naming conventions in most of them, you know, there's obviously going to be slightly, uh, slightly different, different naming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but they translate pretty well. They're, they're usually close unless it's ZBrush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, you know, like polygons and vertices and, um, you know, all of those all of that terminology, it translates pretty much everywhere. And then some of the operations that are done on those, they differ in names, but they're usually pretty close or they're synonymous to, to one another, you know? Yeah. I also, I also, if I can mention that um, in the course, I, um, I'm also showing three different pipelines for modeling. So uh, using concept art and references and um, photogrammetry and also using like a uh, model from ZBrush um, to do retopo and make it and prepare it wow. to be production ready. So it's like just also like introduction part where you can um, see how the pipeline will go, even though it's just like mere basics and explaining uh, how the, the, the whole workflow will go. But it's again the same principle. And uh, well, in the next lessons, we are um, starting to use the knowledge that we got from the first part. So in the second part of the course, we have modeling and UVing. Um, I will try to show you uh, an easy way how to UV your models because a lot of people hate UV. <laughs> Including and myself, UV. bro. Yeah. Including myself. Like when yeah. you say UVs, it's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. No, but uh, I don't know. I uh, well, I, when I UV models, I usually like just put on a podcast or I don't know, listen to stand up or something like that, and just go and do the UVs, and that's it. You know. Yeah. So um, it is. Uni it is the most well, not difficult, but the grueling part of yeah. assets preparation for sure. And yeah. you know, there's cert there's there's a certain amount of work you can do without UVs, but there's a certain point where like, you know, if I want to, if I want to jump into substance designer, if I want to do proper texturing and, and have decals UV, and all UVs. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You need UVs. I don't know if, if people like, if, um, if you make, if somebody makes uh, a course for Mari, you can use PTEX, but I haven't used PTEX, um, uh, never. So, uh, when, when you use PTEX, you don't need UVs, but um, I don't know if some studios use PTEX, but I show here the UVs, which are like a standard uh, way of doing things. So um, the third part of the course is about Substance Painter. So we jump into Substance Painter and then I explain, uh, well, again, the basics of Substance Painter, even uh, though it's really easy to use and it's really intuitive. There are just a couple of things that you need to um, understand when, like, when you import a model, you need to bake it, and then you start to uh, put on materials, and quickly you have a finished um, textured um, model uh, to show. And in the, the last part of the course, uh, we're going to be going back to 3ds Max and um, using Octane uh, Render Engine uh, to render out uh, a single image um of the the model that we've been making uh the past uh two lessons yeah so that's it yeah that's cool. like a breakdown 
what do you think so like if you would break down uh your entire course um you know let's say uh, it, it, let's say if a person that is approaching the course is um a con like a concept artist because that's like a pretty large amount of people that would probably mm -hmm. take this course course for sure <clears throat> Uh, what do you like? What do you think are um, the benefits for them uh, to take the class like that? Well, first of all, they're gonna have a new tool tool set to work with. So if, you're, they, if they're just using like uh, if they're just uh, doing two D concept, uh, this is gonna be just an intro to well making three D concepts, which are much well better. Uh, regarding pipelines and productions, because now if you are um, if you do two D concepts, there are some parts of your well concept which are not um, focused. Yeah, you have some parts which are not designed, or you just get away with it because it's um, a different angle. But if you're working in three D, if you're doing three D concepts, there are no possible angles that you can just smudge a little bit and it, it, it will not be seen so working in 3d you can quickly realize the the, the problems in your in your design so i think uh, um starting out in 3d and doing your concepts in 3d and then later on doing um paint overs uh it's much more beneficial um for students that just do 2d concepts even though you can still well do 2d concepts but i think it's better to do 3d yeah, I, I I mean, I can talk from personal expertise because I've been learning 3D in for past eight years now, I think. Uh, the first mm -hmm. the, the, the first software package I was using was actually Modo. Um, mm -hmm. I've used it for about a year, maybe two. And then I switched to 3ds Max, mainly because of V-Ray, because I was like really liking what what um, Gavril Klimov was doing with V-Ray in his renders. And then uh, I stumbled upon uh grant warwick's classes for, for mm -hmm. v-ray mastering v-ray and that was like really well explained that was like the first time i actually saw something really well explained for v-ray specifically when it was still a soft you know v-ray right now is like a click and go uh, yeah we're very much like all that. Yeah, yeah very much like octane and octane is another package that i use a lot um but yeah so i, I switched for 3ds max you know funny enough 3ds max was my first modeling pa package i've ever learned and i remember um the first time i was learning it i was trying to do like my short film with it you know where he is here's the funny part i was modeling in nerbs <laughs> uh, well, you, we all, i was also first like really intricate model that i did i was trying to make a mitsubishi evo it was i think mitsubishi evo 8 and i was also using nerbs and it was like just mayhem it was so bad <laughs> just like <clears throat> I was I trying to make a character in nerves. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah. god, that was so funny. Yeah. Good old times. Um, yeah, good times. but I can. I started uh, with SketchUp. Yeah. Oh well, SketchUp is pretty easy, right? Uh, to yeah. learn and, and and operate with. Uh, yeah. It's it's actually a pretty good starter point, but it does not. I mean, it kind of explains a little bit, but I think more traditional packages like 3ds Max, Maya. Even Blender these days. I mean, Blender. I've, 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 you know, obviously talked about it. It's, a, it's a great. If you're starting, it's a great package for sure. For yeah, sure. And community is really cool also because it's a free package, so you can learn a lot from other people who are using it. Yeah, and if you are a Blender user, for instance, and you're stumbling upon this class, it's like, if you're asking yourself, can any anything I can learn here can be translated to blender let's say if you're enthusiast and you know you want to kind of learn modeling and all that stuff this class will help you obviously it will not run you through the tools that you need to do it uh with the blender but it will it, it is explaining a lot uh in terms of like what those tools mean and how they're supposed to be used and uh all of the packages that i that i worked with and again i worked with moto i worked with 3ds max i, I worked with um my app for a little bit actually a couple of years ago when i was learning matte paintings uh, Maya mm -hmm. was like the best software for it because of like the projection mapping and everything working really well in Maya uh, yeah. and the, the integration with Nuke, like the, the um, not integration per se, but just like the workflow using that with the compositing tools, Nuke uh, was working out really well. So I've learned that, um, you know, and 
I've been learning Blender uh, a little bit as well, and I can tell that vast majority of the things are the same, or pretty yeah. much the same. It's just a different UI, uh, and the UI part is pretty pretty easy to learn. Um, and then you know, if you're again like three D artist, like do you, do you think um, like w w where do you think that would be a benefit for for more three D oriented folks? Well, if you are working already in, I don't know, ZBrush or 3D Code, this is a really uh, awesome add-on because, um, well, in ZBrush, I usually use ZBrush for organic modeling. Um, I usually do hard surface in Max, but um, there are a lot of students, well, a lot of artists who use uh, ZBrush for hard surface and um, organic modeling. And uh, I think, uh, also, using this course is to um, to learn how the pipeline goes, and because in ZBrush, um, when you make I don't know, a model of a character or something like that, um, you can use uh, ZRemesher or DynaMesh, but those um, models sometimes are not production ready, so you need to do uh, a proper um, retopo or something like that. So you can make your asset be production ready. So if you are a ZBrush user, a 3D code user, or um, I don't know if you're using any hard surface modeling programs, uh, I think this course is going to be beneficial mm -hmm. um, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just even judging from the trailer, I'm just looking at you know the kind of operations you're doing, and because I'm pretty familiar with 3ds Max, I know you know more or less where this is going. It's like, yeah, you're covering covering a lot of grounds. It's not just like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna learn a little bit about modeling and that's it. No, you're actually covering a lot of different tools inside of those software that that makes you makes you a little more ready for what you could possibly do with that. It's not a, it's not a one of those classes where you can only copy. You know, like one of the things that you learn pretty quickly if you if you start searching for material online. Unless it's like a really well prepared, prepared material or uh, instructor is, you know, a, a person that has a lot of experience in teaching. Uh, oftentimes what happens, and I, I have that issue. That's why, you know, one of the reasons why we started the school is just like to avoid that specific issue. Like n not spending your precious time searching for stuff and just pulling your hair out because you watch that one hour video and you've learned nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, is to is to find uh you know the material that actually teaches you something and it's not only teaching you how to do one specific thing and that's it because that's the problem that happens a lot when i you know especially w when i want to learn software that i that is not on the on the, the platform here yet or if some of my friends that i know really well that use it they don't have gumroad videos or anything like that um i know it's going to be difficult to find a proper material for it and and oftentimes it's just like oh someone's showing you a technique and that's like you can only do exact same thing that, that they are doing yeah. <laughs> you try yeah. to deviate is like i've learned nothing <laughs> um but for that thing for that thing and you will always know the thing for that thing right and that's yeah. It. You, yeah you can always go back and use that knowledge it's a real yeah. issue sometimes because like you know i like to learn new software especially for the projects that i that i work and uh you know i've i've mentioned this before uh, on most recent recent film I've been working on, you know, knowing 3ds Max and and rendering packages, I've been using V-Ray and Octane most of the time. Same. Yeah, dude, it just speeds up speeds up the process so it just makes it so easy. And matter of fact, is you know the the the, the best part about this is um, if you're working in 3D and and you're a production designer or, or art director, if you're in, in video games, that will be art director. But in film, it's usually production designers. They reach out and tell you, "Hey, like it, it looks cool, but can you can we see how it, how it's looking from the different angle?" Like now, if you just wanna, if you're just drawing, like, "Oh, I, I'm starting from scratch," and then you have to yeah. like actually examine the image. And then go like just examine the image you've you've done before, and then make sure that it actually works. <laughs> yeah, versus, yeah, yeah. Versus like three D, where you just, just have everything. Yeah. Yeah, just just like move the camera to a different position and just click render because everything is already set up. Yeah, and you, I mean, yeah. you you you've done production design before, and you, did, how much experience did you have working with with art like artists and illustrators? 
Well, I was when I, when I was uh, working on film, I was a uh, set designer, so I usually was the guy who um, was um, being given a sketch from the production designer, mm -hmm. and then I would uh, be uh, drafting out the whole um, well set in AutoCAD, right. which was totally like if you ever worked in AutoCAD, it's a really dull program with a black screen and a lot of lines. And That's so old school, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's still being used because, like, you need uh, a yeah. good blueprint for the construction workers. And afterwards, I would go on set with construction workers and give them the blueprints, and then I would say, "Yeah, that that goes here, this goes there, and that's it." Yeah. yeah. I like where <laughs> this is going, by the way, because you know, like, I've I remember when I was in you know college for a half a year that I failed and then quit. Uh, I was actually learning uh, AutoCAD. We were doing like, you know, electrical mapping in AutoCAD, which mm -hmm. is which is like, why would I ever use that? I mean, I guess if, <laughs> I, if I were an electrician. Um, but I remember learning that. And then, you know, these days you have um, CAD software such as uh, Fusion 360. You have Moments of yeah. Inspiration. Obviously, SolidWorks is, you know, SolidWorks. And then you have Alias, which is more for, I think... Um, car making right automotive yeah design yeah automotive design uh and you, you can make a lot of those you know you you don't you, you don't need to draw like blueprints anymore that much as as in the in the past because you can literally just just build the the stuff and the future where this is going is basically 3d printing um which means that your your the assets you're building in in cad software can be easily translated than to yeah uh, because you're you're building them on one to one scale so yeah. uh, it just you can put it on a printer well for now I don't know what's the largest 3D printer ever so for now it's just for like small parts of the I don't know set if you're making anything I'm pretty sure you know it's it's getting larger in a couple of years yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, but here's the part. Here's the the fun part, and this this like connects to this class directly because that's something I was actually researching myself. Is hey, like I have this awesome asset that I made in in let's say Fusion 360, but now if I want to make it, uh, you know, useful for a video game, like I have to actually do it from scratch, you know, <laughs> yeah. in most yeah. cases. Uh, yeah. And and the the beauty about taking this course is is you know you, you're gonna learn like a traditional um well not traditional the, the 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 proven workflow that is used in video games and film for you know making assets actually useful like for a video game meaning those would be the assets that are actually in the game um not not optimizing them don't get me wrong but just making them so that if if someone wants to optimize them they will have like it's easy yeah, yeah super easy job compared to like taking your you know, and gone intersecting vertices, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing <laughs> model and then trying yeah. to re reproduce it. But also like when coming to CAD, you know, CAD basically triangulates everything. So it's like, you're, you're never going to have, or you don't have, or, or just yet, you don't have an ability to have a really clean meshes from CAD, but CAD software allows you to do like insane amount of details without you know yeah. going insane um with you know topology um and also for like booleans and all those kind of yeah, operations correct. which are much more easier than in max well yeah that's correct and, but you yeah. still have to translate that into you know the the production pipeline and you know what you learn here in this class is actually doing that as well so there's yeah. there's like another application there's just so many fronts where you can take the class and learn and the way it's explained, it's super straightforward, goes from ground up, so you can pick it up without knowing the software at all, you know, so yeah. that's the best. I try, way. like, explaining everything, like, step by step, so you can always go back and forth and uh, try out uh, um, the lessons that you didn't understand, or if you forgot about some information that I gave, so you can always go back and uh, mm -hmm. look into that. But it just, yeah, as you, as you mentioned, it's straightforward. So from the basic parts, then the modeling, texturing, and then final image. Yeah. Then um, you can present to someone. Yeah. 
That sounds good, man. Yeah, it's exactly that. Uh, so let's um, maybe jump into the the lessons themselves. Just uh, elaborate. I, I, we kind of briefly went over what the class, what you can expect uh, from the class and whatnot. And we went over a little bit, you know, what, what lessons are about. But just I want to dive a little deeper into each specific lesson and, you know, bring, bring more light on what, you know, st students can be expecting by, by taking those. So, uh, well, yeah, the introduction part is we will start out uh, talking about the UI of 3ds Max. Then um, we're going to be covering uh, basic transformations uh, like scaling, rotation, copying, pasting, uh, well, making instances or references of a model. So just like the basic tools for, uh, well, the next part um, of, well, for the second lesson where we're gonna be incorporating um, the, the first lesson. So covering the basic tools, modifiers, uh, naming, scene organization, and also in the first part, I'll be uh, talking about different uh, ways you can model an asset. So by using concept art, references, uh, photogrammetry, um, I don't know if anyone is, well, probably a lot of people are already introduced to photogrammetry. Yeah, uh, I, dude, I love photogrammetry. And <laughs> as a matter of fact, 3ds Max and you use the bridge to get some yeah. some goodies from Quixel, mega scans, yeah. and it's, everything looks yum yum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, what what type of, uh, what program do you use, uh, Agisoft or um, Reality Capture? I tried both. Both both work really well. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think you know. I haven't. I haven't been doing photogra photogra photogrammetry <coughs> photography myself that much, uh, but I've been using photogrammetry as photogrammetry made assets uh, mm -hmm. in my pipeline a lot. I've been like. There's so many concepts that, you know. There's there's a lot of different avenues where uh, you can actually purchase assets. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's Turbo Squid or like again, like even just using uh, Quixel Mega Scans. Yeah. You know, I saw yeah. this, um, which it's a little, little um, si uh, you know, little go going a little sideways here. I saw this uh, um, GDC talk about uh, Rebirth, which was mm -hmm. which was actually done with photogrammetry assets, uh, Quixel assets. The, Mega scans and then you know, with, uh, which they did with Unreal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was yeah, yeah. It was awesome. And yeah. you know, when as we were talking, it just instantly made me think. You know, if you would want to do uh, a film like like they did, and and listen, guys, like I I feel like that's where the future is going, where you can by just learning soft, like learning how the pipeline works, and every year it just becomes easier and easier. But there's always a good starting point, and I think this is this is a good starting point. If you if you don't want, want to wait for everything to be automated in a couple of years, learn it now so you can actually prepare what those automation parts are are um, doing for you. Um, but you cannot just take, or you technically can uh, take some of the assets that are not done correctly and then you know slap them inside uh, Unreal, and it's gonna work. But eventually, it's just gonna slow down real quick because at the end of the day, it's a it's a gaming engine, so it needs optimized assets, which this class is about. <laughs> it's about yeah. making the the assets that are ready to optimize optimization, and are actually uh, you know VFX ready and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just uh, just the fact that you're actually covering those grounds is actually really good because it just prepares you. It's almost like this this deck that that has a lot of plugs that you can plug in, you know? Um, but it teach, teaches you like, yeah, like knowing this, you can actually do like this huge array of extra stuff, but you already have like a good solid base to work with, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, yeah it's, um, this course is gonna teach you how you can well easily make a uh, high uh, poly model, which is gonna have good topology and afterwards if you need to optimize that object it just like a couple of clicks away because you already have um, a correct object the correct topology so you can always optimize it much more easier than just having a really bad uh, asset which has holes in it angons triangles 
like messed up geometry. So the, the whole point of this course is just like make correct assets for production. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that would be intro and a little bit of modeling. Yeah. The, the modeling lesson. Yeah. You, I, I'm just looking <coughs> at, um, some of the processes of what you're exactly doing. You're covering modeling, solving problems. This is the, this is the cool part, solving problems where you actually, you know, not only learning how to apply modeling tools into the class, but also like how to, cause oftentimes you learn what to do. But then something doesn't work, and you're just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, this this part, while while we were uh, doing this asset for for uh, freight, um, uh, I talked to Sama because like this whole mechanism, this head which is coming up to the wall, uh, needed kind of like hinges and a couple more parts which will be understandable how this thing opens. So we uh, were talking about. Uh, solving this problem and the best way to solve a problem uh, before animating the, the final thing is to correct those problems and uh, change uh, some things while the model is in low poly because like you just this whole course also while, while modeling is like uh, you will have milestones so first of all doing block out then doing the low poly and then doing the final uh, high poly uh, model. So this is the way also like pipeline, uh, production pipeline. That yeah, I so technically you do have assets that are production ready because you do start with the low poly. So you can always like all the, ex all the work you've done progressing towards the high poly model, you can always revert that back and get, and still use the low poly. You know, in, in technical terms in video games, there are like, uh, there are those things called uh, LODs, LODs is, yeah. yeah, which is basically like instancing <laughs> assets and then, you know, software like, again, like Unreal or Unity or, you know, any, any gaming engine, you can actually program so that it will load assets, but based on distance, it will load lower and lower resolution so that you're not killing the game engine. And this class, like in this class, because you're going through the process of, you know, starting low poly to the high poly, you, you can actually you know, technically, you are technically getting prepared to know how to make LODs as well eventually later in yeah. the future. So, uh, so that's really useful because that just prepares you for what needs to be done. And you know, there's always an argument to be said, like, hey, like you know, in a couple of years, the the software and hardware is going to be so fast that you you won't need a low poly anymore because like again like low poly 10 years ago was like a couple of polygons <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, now yeah. and like what was high poly back then now it's considered low poly so like the, the progression is there but like if you want to work in the industry like you want to kind of start now right like if you're thinking of seriously about being being and doing that it's like you're not gonna wait for a miracle to happen like oh i'm gonna wait till software gets better <laughs> when you have like a button just like click model then rig and animate done yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah arguably is coming like uh, i mean we know it's like all of that is coming we are gonna be you know out of out of work sometime possibly <laughs> or if you learn how to use those new programs and new hardware and software then you still have a job exactly so here's <laughs> here's my point and one of the reasons why i love doing this is and you know i love learning software i love uh m not making people <laughs> to learn software or learn or take classes uh i believe that your best investment uh, for yourself is learning is learning, yeah. learning, 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 and knowing what works in the industry, knowing what works from the best in the industry, people that actually have uh, experience doing that stuff as their job. Not your, not your college professor that has never done any commercial, never done any work for films, never done any work for video games, just read blog posts and online and thinks that that's the way things are supposed to be done. They don't know shit. Like, if you want to learn that stuff, you learn from people like Mihailo, man. Like, that's what you do. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, awesome. Yeah. We're going to have, I think, a few questions. There's obviously questions that are probably answered before you guys are asking them because we're kind of flowing and explaining the class. But I'll read all the questions towards the end, obviously. 
So if you guys have any, and I see a few of them popping up slowly, um, yeah, just just yeah, uh, keep 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 them coming. Uh, we'll read them towards the end. Um, so yeah, you cover modeling, then you go into texturing. Um, yeah, let's let's so, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, uh, well, for texturing, uh, also I'm gonna be explaining like the mere basics of Substance Painter, but I think uh, students will understand like the basic steps that you need to do uh, before even texturing your model. So preparing the UVs, that's gonna be in the modeling part. And then when you right. uh, import your object into Substance Painter, uh, the, the first part is just baking out the maps, which will drive the materials that you'll be applying to your model. So after you done, uh, after you do the bake of textures, um, later on it just it just uh, an awesome way of well, Substance Painter is really fun way of uh, texturing models because it's just for me at least I look at it as a as a game uh, because you can quickly uh, put on slap on a material and. In a, in, a, in a second, you will see um, how it's going to look uh, as a final asset. So it just the best way to learn Substance Painter is just to play with it, uh, just to um, just to explore different um, different parameters, uh, different um, materials, because Substance Painter already has uh, like a default materials which comes with the program. And then you can use those to test out uh, right. how they're going to look uh, on your object. And also you have Substance Source, uh, which is like a whole a big library of different materials that you can use. So um, at the end, uh, when we finish the texturing, uh, we'll be covering also iRay Renderer, which is like an incorporated uh, render engine inside Substance Painter which is same as, uh, well, Octane because it's using GPU. Right. Um, and you can, again, uh, quickly make a, a production-ready render. So if you are doing concept art and you mold your, your asset and then you put on the textures, you can quickly make a presentation for your client, for your um, art director or something like that. So um, when we finish uh, using iRay, then we're going to be exporting textures. In this case, it is going to be for Octane, but also in Substance Painter, you have different presets for different render engines. So if you're using any different kind of a render uh, engine like V-Ray or Redshift or F-Storm, or, or I think F-Storm also has a preset, uh, but uh, you can quickly uh, export those textures. And then we're going to be going to the final lesson, which is rendering out um, a beauty shot uh, production shot of our asset in 3ds max using octane yeah i remember yeah. looking into uh substance myself for a little bit um and you know obviously this is going to be an amazing start for me because I, I was thinking about learning substance for a while uh and you know this is actually a good opportunity because i i just mm -hmm. saw what you do like that just just having like the the base of understanding what the software does it just yeah. opens up so many extra doors for um, for texturing, and texturing is so important. Shaders, like guys, if you think about um, you know making whether it's your three D work or or illustration, and you know technically technically for me it's like a couple of fronts because a I do illustration and concept work for films and, and video games, so I use that pretty much on a <coughs> daily basis. And 3D these days, I would say it's at least 50% of my work, if not more. There are certain projects that is like literally mm -hmm. at 90% of work I, I, I do in 3D only. Um, I had a few projects where it's only Photoshop, which is more and more rare these days. Um, but one of the things I've learned is like textures and shaders are extremely important in, in, in the terms of like presentation. Because they make or break the render. Like if, if you yeah. don't know how to texture and you don't know how to how the the basis for shading works, that's just, it's just not gonna look good. Yeah, um, you can go like um, you can use tileable textures. So not going to Substance Painter or even Mari. So you can use tileable texture, but it will just bring you that far. You cannot like yeah. if you're gonna be 
Uh, making a character, you cannot use tileable textures. Well, you can, but it's a really difficult way and it's not just, I don't know, I never use that kind of a pipeline where I would just use a tileable texture. It's okay for like, if you're making furniture and you need like a wooden material, you can use tileable textures, but mostly I will go to Substance Painter and paint out the whole asset and then I will have one texture which will drive the whole material for my object. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, the last lesson is rendering, which yeah. is we, we kind of already covered the fact that you are using Octane. And I'll just say yeah. it's actually, you know, because I use pretty much every rendering software these days. Um, I just wanted to learn them all to see the, the, the pros and cons. The benefits, yeah. I kind of like ended up going back to V-Ray and Octane. Those are the two major ones that I use all the time. But I'll tell you, like, once you learn any of them, especially Octane and then V-Ray, one of those, uh, they the way they are working in terms of uh, terminology um, and everything, it's just like once you learn one, jumping to another one, and like, let's say if you're an Arnold user or F-Storm or something, it's like, it's a no-brainer. Like, a lot of a lot of topics, a lot of, a lot of like... Um, aspects of shading and, and preparing a render works exactly same across the board. Yeah. I think only difference is like glossiness and uh, um, glossiness and roughness maps. So they're the same thing, just like inverted. And also like if you're somewhere, it's going to be called albedo, somewhere is going to be called basic color, some base color, somewhere is going to somewhere is going to be called diffuse, but it's the same kind of texture, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, well, the same kind of workflow, but just different names in some parts, but it's usually the same thing. Yeah, I'm just replying real quick here. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, man, this is, yeah. We're, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's, that's it, man. That's a lot, actually. It's like over nine hours of content, if not more, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, there is, yeah, there is, there is quite a lot of content to, to go through, uh, and to learn. Everything is really well, uh, explained and really well, uh, laid out. So there is also a, a sped up version of the whole model of the whole modeling process. I don't know how many hours if you, uh, incorporated that also <laughs> to the course. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's it's one of those packed classes for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's, uh, dude. It's awesome, man. I, I again, like, I I cannot stress more how much I like this. Um, this, you know, one of Thank those. You. Well, <laughs> I, the way the way we we think about you know creating a, a creating content for the school is, I try to. Um, to think about what interests me obviously but and that's that's always been the reason why why you know we founded the school we founded this this uh this place where you know you can you can learn from the best or people we think are the best and uh the way we the way we pick and choose who's going to be in the school and we're kind of like privileged in that way because like uh, if you you know i can just decide like hey i want to i want to try and ask this guy if they say yes, perfect, you know, um, is is the fact that, you know, I know what works in the industry. I've done this uh, for almost 20 years. I, I've seen the progression from, you know, uh, early video games to next generation to what's going on with the, you know, with the industry and how it is, how it's progressing uh, towards. And so the way we try to pick the classes is to make sure that you are learning what is relevant in the industry. You're not learning some dinosaur shit that you're never going to use again anymore. You know, you're learning something that, you know, once you learn that, it allows you to, it's almost like a stepping stone and it allows you to progress more and progress more because ideally that's what we, we all supposed to do as artists is always pick, pick on new challenges and, and learn and learn and learn and learn, right? 
Uh, yeah, there, there, are, there, are, there are a couple of times that I mentioned also that uh, throughout the course, it's just like looking at this course, it's just like a stepping stone or just like another tool under your belt. But it's all, it's really, really, I cannot also stress enough how much it's important to learn new um, hardware yeah. uh, and so well, using new hardware and learning new software always. Yeah. Here's a yeah. here's the fun part. Uh, you know, I'm rewatching the trailer over and over and over because it looks so fucking cool. Um, but but it reminds me that you did a lot of work with with the guys over at Kid Bash 3D, which is uh, friends yeah. of ours, obviously. You know, yeah, yeah, Max yeah. Berman and yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and here's here's the fun part. I <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but I I think I'm correct. Learning this class is basically like you already. Once you do that, those are the tools to that you used pretty much for kid bashing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Um, well, yeah, um, I've been working with with uh, Max for the past. Well, uh, I haven't been uh, modeling anything for kid bash since I started doing the course for Learn Squared. Um, but um, it's been a couple of like two years that I've worked with Max, and it was really awesome. Uh, we started out with uh, the London Victorian Kid Bash, and then I just continued uh, making different kinds of uh, models, well, different different um, styles, and it was really really fun to do. Unfortunately, I'm not uh, making any new models now because of the PhD. But um, I met Max in Croatia at IFCC, and then um, we became friends. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it was really awesome. Yeah, Max is a, Max is a really cool guy, and you know we did yeah. like the festivals with them back in the days. Um, yeah, good, I'm really glad. Time, like, man. Now, yeah, I'm really glad now that Kid Bash is all over the place. Uh, a lot of people are using it. Uh, even for um, for Love That Robots, um, oh yeah, the first like first scene, first shot, Utopia, uh, third episode, The Witness, Hong Kong or Future Slums. I don't know that fridge uh, fridge episode, Victorian Kid Bash. So they're like all those kids that yeah. I made are like in really there big like shows. Yeah. So the, so man, really like... the man behind the scenes of Love Death yeah. and Robots here, here. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad that I like when I when I saw all those. You like, indirectly uh, influenced films. those movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. dude. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what people don't realize. Oftentimes, it's like you know, and that's including myself. I use Kid Bash a lot, and I, I purchase not only just Kid Bash 3D, but like you know, I have Turbo Squid account. I use assets like that all the time because, you know, eventually once you reach a certain level of productivity and you work in the industry for for longer and you get client work, it's it's more efficient to actually pay money up front to get assets that you can later use to uh, to do the work that's going to be faster and more effective. Yeah. Right? And that's what you've been doing with Kid Bash 3D, allowing you know lazy bums like myself to, <laughs> to not to go <laughs> and model the CDs from scratch. You know, matter of fact, I don't know how long you've been working with Max, but you know we've used Kid Bash 3D for um, some of the assets from the Kid Bash 3D for the Bl uh, Blade Runner posters. Myself and, and, and Ash, when we were working with um, uh, Ridley Scott for the the latest blade runner like we're working with with uh, alkin who we're trying to yeah i saw that like uh, i think did you, did you did you use uh, the art deco kit i yeah. think yeah yeah Something, yeah you, I, did, you, I didn't make that one <laughs> well, there you go <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but like bad timing but yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah the, the stuff you did for that was awesome and again like the class itself goes through the, the same it's the same pipeline exactly same pipeline it's a different application because you're not creating like a realistic architectural uh assets but once you once you know how the how to make stuff then you know making different kind of stuff is, is like the easier step it's not so yeah. overwhelming anymore it's like oh like how am i supposed to make buildings knowing nothing it's like yeah take this class and you will know everything uh let's jump into some questions there's there's i think we answered quite a lot um you know when we we're talking about the class but there's uh 
a few of them that I want to address. Let's go. Uh, is this a sub D modeling? I guess it's a question about modeling. If, if you're doing a sub D subdivision modeling in the, well, you, I'm, I'm making models, which can be turbo smooth. So you can go like step by step and adding like as in ZBrush, you can subdivide, you can, you can put in more topology, but you can always go back to level one or well, level zero. So I try to make uh, objects, well, assets, which are going to be um, turbo smooth ready so they can be subdivided. And also, I'm uh, in this course. I'm also explaining how you can add more detail by going to ZBrush. So using this model that you made in, in 3ds Max, you go back to ZBrush uh, and add more uh, details like grime, uh, scratches, and all that, and then go back to Max and then export that model for uh, for Substance Painter. Cool. Very cool. Yeah um let's see what other question was there was one question and i'll actually combine those two because they're um not similar but definitely uh, <coughs> see. i cannot find the other one i'll read the first one first then uh mm -hmm. why did you choose 3ds max because back then in 2005 i was a kid that i didn't know any better <laughs> so after SketchUp, I just started like I because as you mentioned, like SketchUp had like really, really at that time, really basic tools. So you just could make like a cylinder, a box and that's it. And uh, I wanted to learn more. And uh, I heard about 3ds Max from um, friend from my friend's brother, who was a little bit older. And then I, okay, I will start and I went to school here in Belgrade. Um, and just, there I also learned like the mere basics of, of 3ds Max. I and later on I went, went and tried to find uh, any tutorials back then. Uh, I don't know uh, when YouTube started, uh, but back then you just had like web pages, like step by step, you needed to yeah. read about <laughs> how people went. Times. Yeah, you couldn't find anything. <laughs> you had to read the manual. <laughs> was yeah, so crazy. I have. I still have the book for for 3ds Max six. Dude, imagine 2019. Anyone reading, buying, and reading a book, <laughs> how to learn a software? <laughs> what? I have for Max. Those are the time we grew up on. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. Dude, it's pretty similar for myself as well. You know, like uh, I just didn't know better. Uh, but you know, I've, I've switched to different softwares over time just to try like what works best. You know, that's probably the best idea for everyone. It's like, if you're not sure what kind of software you want to use, just, just try all of them. Yeah. You know, pretty much every software has a trial version. Just spend, do a marathon of 10, 15 days to learn how the software works and, it, it will tell you whether you like it or not, you know? The best the best part about it, they are all so similar in terms of like what's the industry standard. And once you yeah. learn one, it's very easy to jump and learn another. So or, or just just try like to to see uh which program has a bigger community. So any questions that you have or any doubts that you have or don't know how to do something, you can ask those, those people who are already using that program. So yeah. I also think that is the good way to learn stuff because you have for like for Blender, you have a really big community community because it's a free program. So you can quickly well use Blender, but oh, you can also use well any program. It's a same kind of deal. It's the like a button which is on on in Max on the top left corner. In my is gonna be on the top right corner, but they will do the same thing. Right, and you know, yeah. like with three D three D S Max specifically, yeah, it's, it's a huge community, and especially like a community that do, does plugins and that's that kind of stuff. It's uh, yeah, it's it's huge. It's one of the biggest ones. And yeah. it's probably one of the software that has the most support when it comes to like different rendering platforms as well, because it's been, yeah. it's been around for so long. It's been used in the industry for so long. So there's a lot of things that you consider quote unquote industry standard yeah. uh, and you, you expect how the things should work. And that's, that's how they work uh, 
with 3ds max specifically um there's always you know preference and whatnot but yeah that's that's a topic for a different discussion yeah. um one more question was is uv uh learning dedicated to 3ds max in this class I mean, yeah, I mean, we were working in 3ds Max, so you're UVing in 3ds Max. But I, gu I guess the better translation of this question would be, can you actually take the knowledge of what you've learned in 3ds Max and apply it to different software? Yeah, it's going to be the same kind of thing. The only, the only difference is uh, maybe uh, if you do UVs in RISM or if you do UVs in ZBrush, but for now, it's the same kind of thing. The only difference is the the relax algorithm, which uh, different programs have for relaxing UVs. So for now, you can also use a plugin, which is, as I mentioned, RISM. Uh, before that, I use ZBrush's um, unfolding method. So um, I would like make seams in, in Max, export that model to ZBrush, unfold everything, and then go back to Max and pack everything. Yeah. So, but now I also use RISM and I use uh, Marius Selagi's uh, plugin. If you know, if you know that plugin, uh, I don't, which I is don't use it. So. <laughs> ah, okay. I don't use it yet. So, um. it's it's a plugin for for Max. Uh, it's called Unwrap Pro, but you can also use uh, RISM UV, uh, which is also quite awesome. And it's a all-in-one uh, UVing solution. As I may say, uh, so there are different methods you, how you can UV. Well, you can use different programs to UV, but the method is still the same. Right. You make seams, you unfold, and then you pack, and that's it. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Um, will this course be useful if I'm not using 3ds Max? Uh, I think yes. Yes, because it's again, it's the same for UVing, it's the same method. So, industry standard is to have assets which are not, uh, which don't have any NGONs or, um, um, or flip normals or exploded out vertices mm -hmm. or floating vertices or edges. So, the idea is to have a clean, uh, clean topology asset ready for production. So, you can incorporate that knowledge in any other 3d package which is not 3ds max yeah and to be completely transparent from my end when i'm looking at this stuff and uh, questions like that i always add this this note that I, I think is very important to know so obviously if you if you do the course with the same software as mihailo is using um and you use 3ds max you're going to have the, the full experience of it because you're going to be able to follow step by step and learn those um those things step by step without trying to find the differences between software which is something that adds up a little bit of burden when you're trying to learn learn new things right so you have a trial period of 30 days for 3ds max so yeah. you can try it out like that yeah yeah but again, like if you if you don't want to do that, let's say I have yeah fuck 3ds Max, I don't learn that at all. Um, if you if you use Maya Blender or any any things like any of those things is the the way it's gonna probably work for you. And and I've done this before with learning, maybe not on the course scale, but like tutorial scale scale specific things. Um, there's often times you cannot find like you, you want to do really sp something really specific and you cannot find anyone doing that for that specific software you're using. So you end up actually looking like how actually it's done at all because like I just cannot find anything. You might end up in a situation where you will see the workflow and you will understand, oh, okay, that's how the workflow goes. But now I have to figure out the kinks and just go outside of that you know, learning package that I that I have in front of me, and you know, do 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 a little bit of research, like okay, research, like, yeah. yeah, like if 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 there's flip normals in in this software, how does it work in the other one? You know, if there's like yeah. animation constraints in in 3ds Max, how does this uh, translates into constraints of animation in I don't know Blender or Maya or whatever, right? There might be completely different way you set those things up but it's much easier to find 
very specific things like oh like how the con animation constraints work here because you're going to be much more material for that than how th to create specific workflows um of, of assets creation or and whatnot so so yeah. with that caveat yeah i would say it translates uh translates pretty well um uh, let's answer one more question. There's a lot of like mm -hmm. uh, old G Max talk here as well. <laughs> um, but the last question I'm going to read and we can wrap it up right after. We've been doing this for a little longer than an hour, believe mm -hmm. it or not, um, yeah. is do you import your high poly for texture in substance or low poly? I use, well, sometimes, well, it depends. Uh, if a model is going to be, I don't know, half a million or a million polys, and that is going to be uh, a low poly and a high poly, I will then use a low poly as a high poly. But sometimes if a model is like 30 million polys, I will uh, import a low poly version and then I would use that high poly version to bake um, the details on my low poly version and then I will start to uh, texture my model. Cool, that makes sense. And with that being said, <laughs> let's wrap it up here. Let's wrap it up, wrap it up here. Uh, I I think and I hope that we answered um, pretty much everything that needs to be said about the class. I mean, at this point, it's like just just fucking buy it. <laughs> um, no, I you know I I will say this. I personally stand behind every classes that we do. Obviously, um, you know I pick. I try to pick and choose the best people that I know it's going to fit to the platform, not only the platform, but also knowing that what's what, what works in the industry, what are the avenues that, you know, I would personally learn if, if I wanted to progress with my, with my abilities and be more relevant in the industry as well. And um, we always look through the lens of that, but you know, we also, and uh, some of you who are, you know, watching us and then been with the Learn Squirt for a while, you guys know that we, uh, you know, reach out very often to you guys to ask like what exactly you want to learn as well. And so we try to apply that, find people that are not only available, but also, you know, have a shred of teacher in them. Because <laughs> believe it or not, there's a lot of amazing artists that I would love to learn from, but they're just like, there's no way they can teach you know <laughs> whether it's just from from lack of interest in teaching and that's completely understandable uh to just like complete inability to translate your knowledge to you know what others to others and you know teaching is like anything else it requires practice <laughs> yes <laughs> it requires i learned practice. that the hard way yeah uh well thank well yes but then again like even though you uh, this is your first um uh class right that's out yes there. yes but here's 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 the here's the kicker we have momo <laughs> <laughs> we have momo and you know over the experience over the last uh i believe now three or four years of almost four years of existence of the school it's been uh, a, little, a little over three years actually We've learned so much in terms of how to do classes and how not to do them. Uh, mm -hmm. And a lot of it's through just putting a sheer amount of force and just, uh, yeah, like we want to do the best thing. Um, but also just learning from our own mistakes on like how to optimize the workflow, how to make it easier for the teachers so that we can get the best people uh, to teach, not, not without just uh, you know overwhelming them with like oh my god it's so much work to make it completely right you know because the last thing we want to do is have like uh you know like sometimes you pick up a tutorial online and it feels like it's a it's someone sitting in the toilet and and flushing water while while, <laughs> while, while, while while teaching you know that happens or like yeah being half asleep and like talking really slow and just like and there's like a silence for 30 minutes until that person says another word and it's that happens that happens so like i i personally hate that kind of stuff <laughs> you know it's like when i want to learn something is like do i have to really watch that 10 hour video to learn like two tricks you know i personally hate that so uh we've learned how to divide and we we're constantly trying to learn and improve uh upon the classes themselves 
to make sure that the experience is as accessible as possible. Um, and yeah, dude, you've done an awesome job. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, the class is available right now. Uh, you can go on learnsquare.com uh, slash courses and you will find it there. It should be on the front page as well. You can buy it now. Also, if you want to learn directly from Mihailo and be under his mentorship, we do offer mentorship for this class. Um, it's four sessions. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a more, it's a little more challenging than just buying a course and learning it on your, on your, at your own pace, because you, you're going to have a homework. <laughs> and if you want to take the full advantage of actually, you know, working out some of the kinks of, oh, like, you know, I understand the class, but there's, there might be something that I want to use it for, to apply specifically for myself. It's, it's really the best way to do it, to have an actual, you know, person that teaches the class to tell you. And, and guide you what to do. So so that's available there as well. Um, all right, dude. Awesome time hanging out. Let's let's wrap it Thank up you. here, right? Likewise. Let's wrap it up here. Uh, a round of applause for Mihailo <laughs> and his new course. Um, thanks guys for joining the stream. Uh, you know, we, we always stream when we are releasing new courses. There's a bunch of new courses in works as well. Um, and this is the first one of the year, so I'm super happy. It takes a little bit of time to sometimes produce those, you know, not only us doing uh trying to do as much of a QA or not QA, like an act actual, you know, testing and making sure that what we produce is, is high quality. We always learn how to get it better. Sometimes we don't do it perfectly right, but we're always striving for that perfection. Um, and there's a bunch of more stuff coming up. Uh, there's, there's, I think a question or two, uh, about people asking if I'm going to be streaming more. Uh, if you want to see me regularly live, um, I'm, you know, past couple of months, a year, or maybe actually two years, I've been so busy, you know, I have a kid, so that takes a bunch of time, uh, from, from, from the, the pool of time that I have. So I have to like be really careful how I plan stuff. Um, I just literally came back from like a long, long hiatus and started streaming again um i'm actually doing it first with art cafe so if you want to see me live i try to do a uh, weekly podcast with the best artists and whatnot some of them are which are uh you know instructors from learn squared and we talk about a lot of stuff that is related to the school as well uh, oftentimes um it's al almost like a little behind the scenes background but also just like a hangout with artists so you can catch me there uh, just 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 google go on youtube uh, youtube slash c for channel i guess uh, slash art cafe tv and you'll find some of the episodes there if you want to just like regularly be able to see me live i'm we want to have more live uh live streams with twitch we just need to figure out better timing uh, and schedules for that because you know everyone everyone uh, you know m myself uh, Andrew Momo Aaron and all the guys that are helping us out with uh, learn squared are you know we do have also our regular jobs or like you know we work we work on many fronts let's put it this way so um, cool let's wrap it up here thanks guys for joining thanks Mihailo for being here thank you and uh, <laughs> Any question, if, if you missed the stream or you just joined the stream, it's like, oh, I missed, uh, I want to ask a question. Like if any of that happens or you're watching this video and you want to have, you actually do have a question, uh, you can reach us uh, on learnsquare.com. You can use our help desk or just go and, um, and just contact us. You know, there is, a, there is, a, I believe somewhere. Yeah. If you just click here, if you click here on help right here, you, you you reach us <laughs> we, we we get a we get a uh, email uh, message right away and i think someone asked for discord uh discord is linked actually in uh on our website as well on the very bottom so if you miss that it's like well where's the discord um it's right on the bottom so for for our students i believe it's for our students right now so if you here's here's the best part if you enroll for a class you get you get, you, get, you get to hang out with the best people in the industry, meaning the, <coughs> our, our students. <laughs> Dude, our students are awesome. We're actually doing for the first time ever 
we're trying to uh, gather some of like the testimonials because there is just so many stories that we have and, and people reach out and say, hey, man, like I took a class and like and this happens like, oh, my God, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish it worked for me like that. You know, when I was learning that I would just take a class and, and work for for Hollywood, you know. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. uh, that happens too um step by step yeah it, it, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy it's suffering. crazy what people say <laughs> and from mo most unlikely places uh it's yeah it's pretty intense and it's pretty fun um dude thanks thanks again i i cannot stress uh how much i'm you know thankful for all that and i Likewise. i'm pretty i'm pretty bad at wrapping wrapping things up so <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah let's let's end it here thanks guys thanks for joining many kisses bye bye, -bye <laughs> and thanks for mihaila being here thanks buddy and enroll the course yeah go take the class <laughs> motherfuckers <laughs> bye, -bye. bye.